Happy Tuesday everyone! Today the church celebrates the feast of St. John Bosco. This is the Setia of the Daughters of St. Paul for today's Gospel Power. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and, when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them, that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. Fullness is one of the meanings conveyed by the numerical figure 12. Jairus' daughter is 12 years old. Friends, in the Jewish culture, it is the age of betrothal and the beginning of generativity, but death robs her of that experience of fullness. The bleeding woman, too, has been going through a slow death for twelve years as she pours forth her lifeblood. Fullness of life evades her, for she cannot bear children nor relate normally and meaningfully with anyone because of her state of uncleanness. With her resources depleted in the bid to recover this fullness, 
she desperately turns to Jesus, defying restriction on contaminating touch. Involuntarily, Jesus' power flowed out from him in response to the woman's faith as she experiences fullness. Jesus too breaks the taboo on contaminating touch as he takes Jairus' dead daughter by the hand and turns the emptiness of death upside down to restore to the girl the possibility of fullness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have come that we might have life, fullness of life. Help us to treasure this gift. Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever.